Well, the latest Canadian CPI report showing headline inflation back down to the Bank of Canada's 2% target. And we've got signs, of course, that the economy has been slowing. Should we expect jumbo rate cuts from the Bank of Canada? Joining us now to discuss is Robert Both, Senior Macro Strategist with TD Securities. Robert, great to have you back on the show, particularly on a day like this. Thank you, Greg. Always a pleasure to be back on the, the show, especially when we can uh, talk about something like inflation finally getting back to the Bank of Canada's target. It's hit the bullseye. I mean, how often have you and I talked over the past two years about the fight against inflation, trying to bring it down through the higher borrowing costs? We're at 2%. How should we be framing this? Right. So I think there are a couple things to, uh, to point out right away. Um, one is that that 2% reading on total inflation was actually a little bit softer than we in the market had forecast. We thought it would just get to 2.1%. Um, so that is uh, very positive news that inflation is uh, falling a little bit more quickly than we'd anticipated. Um, but I don't think we should get too complacent about inflation staying here for the longer term yet. Um, we look for inflation to uh, tick higher over the fourth quarter. Um, the Bank of Canada has a, a bit of a push higher built into their forecast as well. So um, while this uh, initial return to the target range is, or 2% target is, is very welcome, um, we shouldn't necessarily expect it to stay here um, over the next few months. And we shouldn't necessarily view this as a sustained return, which is the ultimate goal. Yeah, if we're talking about stickiness in the numbers, when I took a look at them, it's, the, it's sort of the culprit that's been dogging inflation throughout the summer. Shelter costs, whether it's mortgage interest costs or whether it's just rent. Yeah, so even with that, uh, that uh, positive headline number, um, you know, we did see another large increase in rents today. Um, rents are actually uh, at their highest point of the cycle, over 9% year over year. And you're seeing a bit of a wedge between um, inflation pressures for renters versus homeowners. So uh, shelter is still very much a focus um, as we um, hopefully get back to that sustained return to 2%. Um, but what you are seeing in, in today's report um, is you are seeing a, a larger drag from goods prices to offset that. So, you know, furniture, motor vehicles, um, clothing, all those discretionary spending categories, we've been cutting back on those to, to focus on debt payments. That is uh, showing up in the inflation data, um, and that's helping to offset some of that uh, stickiness when it comes to shelter prices. Now, ahead of today's report, obviously, through the summer, the Bank of Canada has been cutting. We've had three interest rate cuts for them. We've peeled back by 75 basis points. Uh, still a feeling out there that the rate we're at right now is too high for the state of this economy. I mean, what is the Bank of Canada going to have to do over the next little while? Well, I, I think, you know, we have to remember that, yes, this, this is a very important step on the, the road to the finish line, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, the Bank of Canada knows that, you know, this is probably going to be uh, rather short-lived. Um, but, you know, with today's uh, downside surprise, um, we are now tracking uh, Q3 inflation below the forecast the Bank of Canada projected in July um, core inflation, you know, wasn't as big of an outlier today. It was roughly in line with where the market saw it. It's running about 2.3, 2.4%, depending on the measure. Um, so while that is also uh, slightly below where the Bank of Canada had it in their July forecasts, um, you know, we're, we're not um, necessarily back to the, the target yet. So um, while those um, fears about, you know, inflation proving more persistent and perpetually stalling above uh, the target range, you know, those fears are looking, um, you know, less um, l like less of a risk uh, today than they did six months ago. Um, that does uh, help to uh, reinforce the Bank of Canada's recent pivot to putting more uh, weight on downside risks going forward. But um, you know, we're still sitting above the the target, or uh, the core inflation measures are still sitting above that two percent target. So we're getting closer, but we're not quite there yet. Now, if I just walked up to someone who follows this kind of stuff, I wouldn't hit the normal person with this uh, kind of lingo, but I said, what do you think? They're going to give us 50 basis points at the next meeting? Up until a little while ago, people would have understood I was talking about the U.S. Federal Reserve, but that conversation has started to creep into Canada. Is there a justification in late October, the next meeting, they could go 50 basis points? You know, we are hearing more and more discussion about the, the risk of 50 basis point cuts. It's something the Bank of Canada governor spoke about in his uh, post-decision press conference. It's something he spoke about again in an interview with uh, the Financial Times that re was released over the weekend. Um, but we think you know, any uh, discussion of larger 50 basis point cuts in Canada is going to uh, involve a scenario where we have um, you know, seen some downside risks to growth materialize. So even though you know, inflation is 
um, tracking a little bit better than the Bank of Canada had projected just uh, a couple of months ago. We do think there would need to be a larger growth shock to uh, provide a little more urgency to, to um, do those larger 50 basis point cuts. Um, traditionally, you know, you would not accelerate the pace of rate cuts to 50 basis points in a scenario where you expected just to get back to, to neutral policy and then stay there. Uh, traditionally, you know, we've seen those 50 basis point cuts uh, materialize in a scenario where the Bank of Canada has had to go through neutral and had to provide stimulus to the economy. Um, so, you know, we don't think we're there yet. Um, but with inflation proving to be a little less persistent than many expected, um, I, I think you can look at this as, um, as, as something that could pull forward the timeline to get back to neutral. How do the other parts of the economy, now that we have inflation, now there's numbers they don't expect it just to sit at two, it could be you know, a bit above a bumpy ride through the fall, but the rest of the economy, the labor market, uh, GDP, how, how is all that lining up? Um, so, so far, the, the third quarter has roughly um, evolved in line with our own projections. Uh, the Bank of Canada was a, a bit of an outlier in their last forecast. They had a very, uh, let's call it lofty projection for Q3 growth. Um, the Bank of Canada is essentially looking for the economy to accelerate to a 2.8% growth rate. Um, given the uh, monthly activity data we've seen for July, uh, given the expected um, impact of those railway strikes in August, it's become very difficult to see that acceleration taking place. Um, we don't think that's necessarily the, the cause for alarm. You know, there are explanations for why uh, Q3 growth has been a, bit, a little bit weaker than the first half of the year. But as we do get um, into the end of the year, we do expect to see growth uh, returning to that trend-like pace. And at, in 2025, we do expect to start um, absorbing some of that excess supply that's built up over the last couple of years. So, you know, you're seeing that period of softer growth reflected in the labor markets. Um, unemployment rate has risen. Um, but we do expect uh, we are still going to see a soft landing. Now, that's a nice breakdown of the situation here in Canada, the news of the day. Of course, the big event for global markets is, is coming mm -hmm. on Wednesday, coming tomorrow, the, uh, the Fed. What are we thinking about there? Well, you're, you're right that, you know, the, uh, the Canadian CPI figures, well, certainly um, interesting and topical to those north of the border. Um, you know, the Fed is going to be the, the main, um, main event for, for markets this week. Um, so right now we're heading into this Fed meeting, uh, pricing just over a 50% chance of a 50 basis point cut. Um, we think the Fed is going to do 25. Um, we think that it is a, a very close call. Um, our uh, preview that we published earlier this morning had a 40% risk that they do do a larger rate cut. Um, but we think, much like Canada, there's really not enough urgency from the Fed, given we are still heading towards that soft landing. Even with you know, softer pace of job growth, um, you know, things aren't necessarily falling off the wheels. Um, the Fed's also going to be giving um, a new dot plot at this meeting. So, you know, there is going to be uh, more guidance than, than what we're accustomed to in, in Canada. Um, and I think that dot plot is going to be really under a microscope because that's going to give us an indication of whether individual uh, members of the federal, uh, the FOMC, actually expect uh, rate cuts at a 25 or 50 base point increment going forward. So we think that dot plot is going to show uh, 25 basis point cuts in the next two meetings. Um, but there's certainly a risk you will see uh, individual dots pointing to a more aggressive easing path. 